All right, back here with Dr. Thomas Cunningham. How are you doing today, yeah, Thomas? I'm doing well. Ready? Cheers. Good morning. Yeah, ready for a training session. Yeah, yeah. We got uh, caffeine is the, is the topic yeah, today. Okay. I see you got your caffeine there. I'm here. I'm ready yeah. to go. Well, well, up. well done. Um, hit me with the high points here. What can caffeine do for us as climbers? Yeah, sure. So uh, probably one of the best performance enhancing drugs that we've studied here yeah. on the market, right? So it can enhance cognitive ability, decrease reaction times, which is important in climbing, yeah. improve our skill. Uh, and then increased drive, so our time to fatigue is definitely going to be delayed. Our strength, our power, all going to be heightened with caffeine. Wow. I mean, that is those are that is a hell of a tick list of of potential benefits there. Uh, I'm assuming that there are some rights and wrongs, some pros and cons to mm -hmm. all of this. Let's let's dive into it. But first, maybe a little helpful to kind of get nerdy here, yeah. as you are a medical doctor, yeah. and um, just try to get like a layman's understanding for me, dumb it down for me on what caffeine even is and, and how it affects our body. Sure, yeah, so I mean, it works multifaceted, lots of different things. I would say the biggest thing is that in the brain, it's gonna help stimulate the release of dopamine, and then it also helps to release norepinephrine. So those are kind of two really big neurotransmitter hormones that can help to increase that power, increase the strength, increase the drive, also promotes addiction, which is why we all like caffeine so much. <laughs> right. um, and then the side piece is that it will block adenosine receptors in the brain. And adenosine is a molecule that will build through the day that produces fatigue and makes us sleepy. So what the caffeine does is it pretends that we're not sleepy and gives us more energy. So it, it doesn't just help us to um, kind of delay or even mask like the feeling of sleepiness, but you're saying um, dopamine, which I, I kind of immediately associate with like happiness or feeling good. Yeah, yeah drive and it, it's really the pursuit, right? So back in the caveman days when we were going after the meat or going after food, it was that dopamine that gave us that ability to maintain the fight, keep after on the trail, those kind of things. And then from a physiologic standpoint, that epinephrine or the norepinephrine release is going to increase cardiac output. It's gonna increase blood flow. It's gonna get the blood to our forearms. It's gonna get the blood to the tissues. It's gonna yeah. give us that you know, stimulant effect to help us with the power and with the strength. Yeah. Um, so even though it is a little bit of a vasoconstrictor, the increased cardiac output and blood flow make it, you know, definitely worth to use. Hell yeah. It, it definitely sounds like it's, um, it, it's, it's uh, an opportunity. And it's interesting for me because um, I, I tend to, uh, like I don't drink coffee, for example, because mm -hmm. I, I tend to get some anxiety and some jitters from it. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested in the positive benefits. I'm not interested in the negative benefits of it. So let's talk about application or kind of delivery vehicle. Okay. Uh, and maybe dosage as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you talked about some of the jitters and the anxiety that people can feel. And one of the things other than releasing dopamine in the brain is it really stimulates um, glutamate. And so um, that the glutamine or that amino acid in the brain is that stimulatory mm -hmm. effect. And so it works in conjunction with GABA and glutamine or kind of the rest versus the excitatory right, transmitters right. there. So the caffeine will definitely upregulate that. There's things that we can do to mitigate that feeling, you know, by adding other types of nootropics with the caffeine. Um, and then as far as dosing, really we want to start somewhere in the one to three milligrams per kilogram. So, it, you know, an average size male climber, maybe around 70 kilos or right. 80 kilos. So we're really looking at somewhere in the 80 milligrams to 200 milligram dosing. Really, once you go over that 200 milligrams, that's when you start to get into trouble with too much jitters, too much anxiety, too much of a diuretic effect, or you're peeing all the time, or right. having to have an extra bowel movement, and, and that can be problematic for sure. And and is that um, kind of taking that example? Maybe it's uh, 80 to 200 milligrams. Is that in a single dose, or over the course of a period of time, or a day? Um, kind of what's the the effective dose if if i'm about to go out and try super hard on the project sure i think it, the definitely dose dependent per person mm. right so everybody's going to metabolize caffeine a little bit differently we have this sip 1a2 um, enzyme that is part of the sip 450 group and it's what helps metabolize and break down the caffeine and everybody's different so you right. kind of have to experiment so for me personally i try to use somewhere around 100 milligrams or maybe a shot of espresso about 30 to 45 minutes before go time. Okay. And you can continue to increase that dose through the day. So it's not like you have to take the 200 or the 100 right at one time. You can definitely try to stagger that, taking 80 maybe once, twice, or three times before those goes. What about for those who are accustomed to having their double, you know, uh, espresso, triple shot, you know, mm -hmm. venti, 
macchiato probably loaded with all sorts of other things beyond just the caffeine. But if I'm accustomed to having that every single day in the morning to kind of get me going, start my day, get to work, um, and then I'm going to have a session later in the day, maybe I've already had a couple hundred milligrams in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do I do I then have another few hundred later in the day or do I have to double the dose to to give me that effect? Um, I'm not that person, but I think a lot of people out there probably yeah. do rely on caffeine every single day just to kind of operate. So what's the, how does the dosing change in that scenario? Sure, I mean, because of that dopamine release, it's very addictive. And mm. I think what you're talking about is very common. And I think it's a double-edged sword. I think that there's negative returns. So once we get over that 200 milligram threshold in one sitting, you're really going to have too many of the negative effects and you're not going to be getting those performance benefits. Mm -hmm. So as hard as it is, I would really promote a caffeine detox or caffeine holiday. So I try to only use caffeine on the days I really need it, maybe three or four days a week, and then trying to abstain from caffeine a couple times a week so that I'm not completely addicted and that those receptors are really fresh and the caffeine works especially during performance time. You know, if I'm going out and trying to red point, I may abstain from caffeine anywhere between three or five days before I go out to send the project. Oh, no. That way, when I use it on that morning or right before the go, it, it works well. You're not, you're not gonna be making um, too many people very happy about uh, abstaining on caffeine for a few days, but um, I think that's an interesting point. We should explore that for a second because you're, you're saying that um, it's not a matter of just increasing the cat. If I'm accustomed to having a couple hundred milligrams of caffeine every morning with my morning coffee, I can't just go out and have 300 or 400 in the afternoon um, and get the same benefit as if I were to do 100 milligrams even, having taken the day or two days prior off. Yes, that is definitely better. And huh. it's mainly because those positive effects that we talked about, the norepinephrine release, the dopamine, which is a big one that helps with the drive, that helps us keep going, those can be you're going to get tolerant to them. And so that's why most people that are taking caffeine every day, they need it to just function. Yeah. If not, their dopamine levels are so crashed, they're depressed, they're, you know, we've, we've all seen those people in the office right. or, or in the gym in the morning before the coffee. And, and that's because their body is just too reliant on that caffeine to maintain a normal dopamine mm -hmm. stasis. So if we can withdraw from that, get a nice level dopamine and then hit the caffeine again, then all the good features are going to be heightened, but not to the level where we're gonna get the bad features. So let's talk about like modes of delivery. You got your coffee, it makes oh, yeah. me jittery. Um, you know, there's a million things with caffeine out there. And, and so what I use, and I brought um, just for a visual reference here is this Crush by Fizzy Vantage, which is um, essentially a caffeine pill, but it's got some other ingredients in there, um, tyrosine and taurine and theanine, but it's about 150 milligrams. So uh, how much caffeine is in your coffee compared to my 150 milligrams here compared to maybe I don't know, a Starbucks coffee, that yeah. kind of thing. And, and does it matter how we get? It? Yeah, I would say, you know, caffeine is caffeine, mm -hmm. right? But the things that we add to it are definitely gonna change how we feel in those delivery agents, right? So today I have some espresso, double shot, you know, maybe a little, little extra, maybe not quite a third, but I would say probably right at that 200 milligrams. Okay. Um, the crush, I think, is 150 milligrams. So right there in that sweet spot between about 80 and 200. So I think that we're gonna be dosed really well with that today. Um, one of the things that some of these other deliveries have is things like L-theanine and tyrosine. So tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine. So if we're using up a bunch of dopamine because we're taking caffeine, it's nice to have some of those building blocks around, which is right. good. And then we talked about the jitters or that anxiety that some people feel with yeah, caffeine. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about is that caffeine will really elevate that glutamine or the, you know, that excitatory system that's right. there. And so what the L-theanine does is it shifts that balance back towards the GABA. And so it will actually offset some of that excitatory stimulation in the brain. Without mitigating kind of the, the benefits uh, with regard to, you know, stamina or, or top end power and that kind of thing. It just yeah. it kind of cuts the edge of the anxiety. It without... does. It does. And it, and it also stimulates, um, you know, dopamine and serotonin. So you're still going to have that, that drive that's there just without the jitters. Yeah, cool. You know, some people like the jitters. So, right. you know, some people think, you know, if my hands aren't shaking, I don't know if I'm caffeinated. His scalp starts yeah, to tingle exactly, a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, you know, I kind of like that sometimes, <laughs> right. but, you know, know that it's working. Um, but yeah, everybody's a little different. And so it really depends on how you metabolize it. The dose is really person dependent. So you really have to experiment. But 100% of the time, you're going to get tolerant to caffeine. So it's important to take breaks. And then as you were saying, um, you may uh, kind of dose it out over a little bit of a period of the time. I'm thinking about like, you know, you go to the crag, maybe you've got a, a six hour session, you want to do a few attempts. So if I'm going to do 200 or 300 milligrams over the course of that day, 
um, and it takes maybe 45 minutes or, or yeah, an hour I would say for 30, it to peak. 30 minutes to an hour Got for those people. Everybody's a little bit different. And then I so would you can say- you do like 100 milligrams every- Every four four hours maybe a few hours okay yeah. got so it. i would say you're going to get the most benefit right in that first you know one to two hours and then it'll start to to mitigate and at about most people four hours you're probably not going to feel those good stimulatory effects which is why you really don't want to be taking caffeine about six to eight hours before bedtime or else it can mm. definitely mess with your sleep so you've got that night workout session mm -hmm. you got to be yeah, careful you want those adenosine um, receptors to really be saturated to really get that sleep drive going yeah good to know Man, I'm psyched. Well, I've, I've had my uh, caffeine in with me uh, for about 45 minutes here, so I'm feeling, ready, I'm feeling yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Uh, you're just about done with your coffee oh, yeah. there. Uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate the time on caffeine today. You all can swing by Thomas's site. Hit that link below. You can learn more about it. You can chat with him about it. And, of course, reach out if you've got any uh, questions or comments, and I'll get to those, or I'll get to Thomas so he can get to them. But until then, enjoy your morning coffee.